Welcome back to Purple Color Life. In today's video, this is officially the one year anniversary of me getting the Steel MS261 chainsaw. So in today's video, we're gonna cut up some hickory, do some splitting on the split fire log splitter, and then kind of talk through what it's been like to have my first ever professional grade chainsaw for one year. Let's get started. Here's the shag bark hickory we're cutting at today. You can see it's a pretty good sized log. I've got this one that I'd still like to take over to Jay's to put on the mill to see what that looks like. And then I've got that one down there that's a little bit more bent. That'll probably just be firewood. This one is too long to haul for sure. So I'm gonna cut off of this end and then that end down there kind of tips down. So I'll cut off of that end also. It does have those worms in it, the boar beetles, which I made a video about in the past. You can see the holes where they have bored through the shag bark. Of bugs on there at the bottom but you can see how beautiful that hickory is so i mentioned in the video where i announced that i bought this saw that i had been looking at the 500i or the 261 and a lot of people have commented on that video they're totally different saws for totally different applications and i'll say kind of that is the case either one could be used to buck up firewood like this the price point of the 500i is why i said the 261 was my choice but I was looking for an addition to my MS290 Farm Boss. So I could have gone with either the 500i or the 261. I chose the 261 because of the value. Um, it's lightweight, easier to handle, and for 99% of what I cut, this is plenty of saw. So the 500i would have been overkill for my needs most of the time. This hickory is pretty good size rounds and this thing just ate right through it without any issue. A lot of people have been asking, I did a six month review and I talked about how we were constantly leaking bar and chain oil. No, it wasn't leaking for the cap, from the cap. A lot of people suggested the cap wasn't on right or wasn't sealing right. This thing never leaked from the cap. It always leaked from down below, underneath the saw, right in there. And I mentioned in a video where I talked about getting the new trimmer. So I bought a professional grade trimmer. And in that video, I gave the update on what happened when I took this saw to the dealership. They found actually that one of the oil line hoses weren't on completely in assembly from steel brand new. They fixed that. It took about two months for it to stop leaking in the garage. I think there was still just some oil laying within the case that kept dripping out in the garage. But since that time, 
I get normal amounts of oil when this thing sits. Not like it was before where it was basically draining the whole tank of oil inside the case of my chainsaw. It was a huge mess. Now I get a normal amount of oil. Again, probably what is left from when it's pumping oil through the saw and running. And then I set it down. There's probably a little bit of residual oil that drains down through over time but nothing at all like what I was getting before. So that was the fix, that's the update. There was a hose that wasn't fully connected from the manufacturer. My steel dealer took care of it and the problem is solved. I also did a video about bar size. I've found, I've used the 20 inch, the 18 inch and the 16 inch bar on this chainsaw. And for what I like to cut, the 18 inch bar is the perfect bar length for my cutting firewood with the chainsaw. It's a little bit longer than the 16 inch that I typically use on the MS290. And that gives me a little bit better reach through some of the, the bigger pieces, but still I can measure the size of my firewood using just the bar without any additional measuring tools because I can put 18 inch pieces easily in my buck stove wood stove. Now, a lot of people have commented on the six month update that my saw still looks new. I hardly use it. And there is some truth to that. I am not a professional arborist or someone who spends all my time cutting firewood and selling it. I only cut firewood for our heat here in our home. So I'm not out cutting every single day. There may be weeks at a time or even a month at a time that I don't start up the MS-261. But when I do need it, I come out, I grab it, it's ready to go, put the fuel in it. I use that Sabre uh, fuel mix, so up to 101 ratio. And I go ahead and put that in here and it runs awesome. The other thing I do, and leave a comment if you're the same way, I alternate work time between my two saws. I don't wanna just use one and let the other one sit for long amounts of time. So I'll typically use the MS-261. Um, it cuts a lot faster. It's a little bit lighter weight. It is my favorite saw, but I don't wanna just let the MS-290 farm boss sit. So every other time I'm going out in the woods and cutting, I grab the MS-290. So I try to split the work time equally between them. That's another reason why you don't see a ton of wear and tear on this. The, another reason is I wipe it down and clean it up typically after every use to try to keep it looking nice like this. So leave a comment down below. Are you like me? If you've got multiple saws, do you try to split the time between all the saws so that you're equaling out the work time with all the different saws you have? Or if you have a favorite, do you just run that one all the time unless you need a backup saw and then you go to one of your other saws? I brought the Splitfire 2265 back here in the woods because it's a little bit easier to maneuver. You can see we've got some downhill and uphill here. And I thought if I need to disconnect this from the Polaris Ranger, the 2265 is quite a bit lighter for me to just manhandle around here in the woods on uneven terrain. What we will have to find out is if this hickory, which is a hard hardwood here in Pennsylvania, gives the 2265 any trouble. These are pretty big pieces. Definitely the 3465 would have a little bit more umph to push through those logs, a little bit higher table height for working because I had special ordered it with the eight inch lift. If you haven't seen the video yet about the other split fire splitter we use, I'll put a link to that up above. And even a comparison, we did a video where we talked about the two splitters side by side. I'll put a link to that up above. There's also a whole playlist about chainsaws and firewood. You'll find lots of videos in there about log splitters, the chainsaws, and our experience with cutting firewood here on Purple Color Life. All right, it is almost four o'clock and it is in the woods here, starting to get dark already. I gotta get to work. I only cut three rounds because I knew I didn't have a whole lot of time. We're gonna split through those. We will load them straight from the log splitter into the Polaris Ranger. That's why I brought these things down into the woods with me so that I'm cutting, splitting, and hauling it to where I need to stack it rather than loading the rounds into the back, taking them up and splitting them, and then loading them again.
2265 had absolutely no problem setting through that hickory. That is one of the things I love about the split fire. I always say they are like underrated in the, in the sense that not that many people know about the split fire, two way splitters, and the tonnage is so much less than what they can actually do because of the engineering and how the log stuff work, how the knife work. I made a whole video about why the engineering of the split fire is the reason that we ended up with the fire to log splitter the thanks to that video up above. I don't know if you saw what I was winning. I tried to say what some of those uh, boar beetles were living in the skin or in the outside part of the hickory woods. I tried to toss it off the side, but there will still be some undoubtedly in this firewood. So I'll stack it in the woods away from my other stacks of firewood just so that those Four beetle bugs don't bore into my other firewood. As far as the MS-261 goes, after one year, would I buy it again? Absolutely worth every penny. Best chainsaw I ever owned. Um, it cut easily through the hardest woods we have here in Northwest Pennsylvania. And it's reliable. I, I just can't say enough great things about it. Now, there was nothing wrong with my MS-290 farm boss. It was so reliable that that's the reason I wanted another steel chainsaw. And I wanted to upgrade the professional saw that's going to cut a little bit faster, makes the content so you can and experience what it was like to have a professional grade saw, and there is definitely a difference. Thanks for watching. You see any of the comments down below on your experience with professional grade saws, whether that steel, custom bar enough, echo. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we're just splitting a couple rounds of the Jaguar Hickories and the one year review of. Deal MS-261 professional game stock.